we were driving somewhere, as I recall, and, and he said, you know, uh, up where we grew up in Minnesota, they, they, they were very afraid to have four-way stop streets. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, the culture in Minnesota is such that if you have four-way stop streets, everybody stops and nobody will go. I thought that was a very amusing story and one that actually characterizes Paul in a very personal way. He sees the best in people, quiet, but he packs a punch. I was welcomed at the door by Paul Engstrom who basically said, whatever you need, whatever I can do to help you. And he's remained true to that to this day. He was able to mentor me through my postdoctoral years into a faculty member. He's really trained a lot of the leaders in the field of cancer prevention who now are themselves nationally recognized. So while others left, I decided to stay. And I think I was the luckiest of all to have been able to work with him all of these years. I think I owe my career to him. I think I definitely lucked out in terms of getting the right mentorship here with Dr. Engstrom. I don't know why in the world he hired me. You know, I didn't have any of the right pedigree in my mind. I knew how to take care of cancer patients and I knew I wanted to do more than that. And somehow he saw in that an opportunity to let me grow into that. And I'll never forget that. One of the things that I think is most striking about Paul Engstrom is how young and curious his mind is. His passion is contagious. He reads all the new papers even before I get to them. His cancer prevention control uh, accomplishments have been nationally, internationally recognized. He realized that we could get a lot more bang for the buck by preventing cancer than spending millions and millions of dollars to try and treat it. He's a founder of the field of cancer prevention and control. The people who train those who are now building on the field. The smoking cessation programs on a national and international basis, uh, Paul, recognize and put cancer prevention and control on equal stature with basic science and clinical science. Paul really helped shape the future of cancer prevention. How can we start investigating opportunities to um, intervene in the formation of tumors before they even started, uh, to sort of nip it in the bud? Paul and his career has had worn so many hats at Fox Chase. He came as a medical oncologist. He became head of the population science division. He served as chairman of the medical oncology department, I believe, twice. He established what was called the, the Fox Chase Network. This was a network of community oncology practices where we would provide opportunities for clinical trial and other research. It was one of the most successful uh, network hospital uh, systems at the time. Paul was one of the founding members of the NCCN uh, at a time when everybody was competing with each other for who's got the best clinical trial and who has the best data. And it's grown into a very large, broad organization that covers all aspects of cancer care. My mom was first diagnosed with cancer in 1985, and Dr. Engstrom was her doctor. My father was diagnosed with cancer 87 or 88. My sister was diagnosed with cancer uh, in 2015, and I was diagnosed with cancer in 2010. So for better or for worse, we've been patients of Dr. Engstrom for the last 25, 30 years. We now know that we have Lynch syndrome as a family, but I remember him just telling us as kids to Know, always get ourselves checked and quite frankly that's the reason that I got checked often and that's why we were able to find my colon cancer at age 30 uh, before it became a bigger issue than it, it was at that point. And he always just had a next step, another plan, something to try. He's always been available and so it was always a reassuring, very nice feeling that uh, he, he really genuinely did care. 
I was working in intensive care and he came up to start an IV because the nurses weren't allowed to do it back 50 years ago. And he came up and he couldn't do it, so I came in and did it for him. And that's how I met him. And then he called me up and we went out for a date and the rest is history. He's been a very nice husband, actually. I call him the makeshift man because he's thrifty. He will never buy a part. If something needs fixing, like the if plumbing needs to be fixed, he will always jerry-rig it. We've been married for 58 years. Paul is a wonderful father. He's a wonderful grandfather. He loves his children, and he loves me. When I think of Paul, I think of steadfast. Paul Engstrom is brilliant and a visionary. Dignified. Dedicated. A great mentor. There's always a delight in that and knowing that you're learning from the best. Paul never was in the front and leading. He was always beside you. He's someone you can always look up to. Honest, a man of integrity, and a man of grace. And there aren't a lot of people around like that, so that's what I will miss. What I'm going to miss most about Paul is his being the quiet, thoughtful person in the room. And when he speaks, everybody listens. I told him he's already on speed dial, so I know he's not going to be that far away. Paul and Janet, thank you so much for all you've contributed uh, over the decades to the growth and the quality of everything that is Fox Chase Cancer Center. We can't thank you enough. To Janet and Paul, have a wonderful retirement. Enjoy those times, and we hope to see you around the campus frequently. Thanks for all your help. Dr. Engstrom, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you've done for me and for my career. Paul is the daughter of another Scandinavian Minnesotan. I've always appreciated your level-headedness, your quiet tenacity. It's been an honor to be your colleague. Um, I'm going to miss you. Paul and Janet, I want to wish you all the best for this next period of your life together. I have no idea what you will come up with next, but I know that it will be wonderful. Paul and Janet, I want to thank you and your family for being a very special part of my life. Um, best wishes for the future. Dr. Engstrom, thank you so much for all of your support over the years. I will miss you so much, but I hope you will come back and visit us often. Dr. Engstrom, I appreciate the last decades of treatment, of caring, of discoveries, of taking care of the Stitchera family. Congratulations. We'll certainly miss you. Uh, Paul, I, I'm glad that you're retiring. I think it's time. You've spent a lot of time here, and, but I think you're going to be very bored. And I do love you, and I don't know if I want you home for lunch every day. 